lunch and silent auction. Take a look at a few of the more than 75 items that will be offered during the auction that are displayed on the back table. So those are in the sanctuary in the back. You will have the opportunity to pick up some amazing bargains and help the church financially at the same time. What a deal. So we also um, have the craft fair coming up on November 7th. So there's still a few tables left. So if you talk to Sherry Mason back, she'll She'll get you set up there, and then if I'm correct, there's a church council meeting after. Real short one. Just a short one after church. So uh, I don't think I'm skipping anything else. So if you um, greet everyone in the name of Christ, passing the peace.
If any of you have, and I forgot to mention, fill out your uh, attendance slip, and then we'll pass that in when the offertory happens. So if you would please join me in the um, call to worship. It was easy to come to worship this morning. You feel, you feel welcome, welcome and look forward to the worship service. Get ready. God is waiting for you. We have, have to be ready to let go of the things that keep us spiritually frozen and tied down in life. Get ready. God is waiting for you. Open our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to receive your word for us. Amen.
bring courage, comfort, and deliverance. As a child of children, we are mindful of the children in our community and among the nations who meet together today, in tangible assistance. Open our eyes to see how our church may demonstrate your love and kindness to the weakest among us. We pray for Christ your Son, who helps children gently in his arms and bless them. Girl, the snowman. A little 
music? No. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. All right, very good. Well, also in the hat uh, is a young person. And yes, they have on the hat and they have on the scarf and some gloves and probably some snow pants and some boots. So what does that remind you of? Thank you for reminding us 
anger that we have and that we are not to go around insulting people or saying bad things about them because it can lead to bigger problems. In Jesus' name we pray. Charlotte LaRue Boone for baptism. 
And so with that, you take the parents through what we call the renunciation of sin and profession of faith. And so, many times, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, and oppression, in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. I do. Will you nurture Charlotte in Christ's holy church and that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself to profess her faith openly and to lead a Christian life. If so, say, I will. All right. And now, the congregation, as well as the rest of the family, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If we so, do. say, we do. We do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Charlotte now before you? your care. With God's help, we will proclaim good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Charles with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks the way of peace to life. Amen. And now to all. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, the Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, where nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. 
Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and to Charlotte, who will receive it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Well, Pastor Darlene walks down the aisle and introduces Charlotte to the congregation as her brothers and sisters in Christ. I would like to read that her bonnet. I'm just a little hanky, as square as square can be, but with a stitch or two, they've made a bonnet out of me. I'll be worn home from the hospital or on my special christening day, and then I'll carefully be pressed and neatly tucked away. Then on my wedding day, so we've all been told, every well-dressed bride must wear something old. So what would be more fitting than to find little old me, a few stitches snipped, and a wedding handkerchief I'll be.
to welcome our new sister in Christ. Experience, excuse me, mission and outreach 
and leadership in the inner city. So if you know anyone, anyone interested in that for this coming summer, um, let me know and we'll make sure to get you a copy of that. Well, you have heard the reading of our scripture from Mark, the 10th chapter, verses 35 to 45. And of course, this for those who have been coming regularly know that this is not a new one. This is a message that we started back in September. And the reason why we started it is um, really the Lord leads me to, as soon as we started the church, we kind of set up a foundational sermon. And this has been one of them. And I hope you will hear those principles as we go through. But the title of the day is, as it was, except for last Sunday, the past couple weeks, is Ransom Where, and it is part three. And prayerfully, we can finish this up today so that we can move on to other things. God would have us to talk about. So just to give you a little bit of a uh, nutshell for those of you who missed it, um, we talked about um, ransom notes way back in the day and how it used to be about kidnapping people. But because of our digital age, kidnapping of people, yes, still happens, but there's also some type of kidnapping that takes place and that is of our data or data, how do you like to say that word? Um, it can happen on computers, it can happen on laptops, different things like that, even your cell phones. And that new crime is called ransomware. Ransomware. And ransomware happens when something called malware, and for those of you who are the younger ones, you know what I'm talking about in terms of computer terms, so I'll do my best to kind of explain it a little bit more uh, as we go on. But malware is like a virus that is put on your computer or your tablet or your cell phone. And uh, once that malware or that virus is on there, sometimes it causes the screen or if your computer or laptop or cell phone or whatever it is you're dealing with to freeze up and you can't do anything with it because it's been taken hostage by the malware. Well, the Lord had us to relate this to our scripture as we were talking about James and John from the passage that was read to you um, and how they went to Jesus and asked him if they could sit on his uh, side uh, when he entered his kingdom. And so he pretty much told them, well, that's not for me to give, but you know, I, I sense that you all are trying to be great here and the way to be great is by serving. And uh, that is what he, of course, tells us, that the way we want to be great in this world and in this life is not so much to obtain, 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 obtain things, but also to remember that we have to serve, serve, serve others, serve humankind, and that will, in his eyes, consider us to be great. But James and John display the malware we want to make it to something spiritual, of course we do, of sin, okay? So malware on a computer in our lives is malware of sin. And the sin that James and John had displayed was the sin of pride and godly, excuse me, ungodly ambition. So it can have some pride, so it can be ambitious, but when it's out of order with God's plans for your world and for your life, then it becomes malware or sin. We then related that to what we believe has been some type of malware or virus that has spread throughout Cleveland with the increase in the number of crimes as well as especially uh, the death of these three precious babies, a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a five-year-old, I think something like that. And not only that, but also just looking at ourselves that we too can be affected with malware of sin with the way that we're unkind, the way that we're smug, and the way that sometimes we have a lack of faith. We talk about how Jesus is the answer for this rain, uh, for this malware of sin that happens in our lives. And of course, we can find that out in um, a couple of scriptures, especially the one that we read today, <clears throat> that he is the one who gave us life, as he tells us in verse 45, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus is the answer. 
And then we also talked about that there were other portions of scripture that points that out, uh, ransom in the New Testament from 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. And Paul makes it clear that Christ Jesus, he himself, himself human, gave himself a ransom for us all. And so that leads us to our title for today, or part of our message for today, are the things that freeze us up. So once again, when malware is placed on the computer, or this new ransomware, the digital age of things that happen, it causes our screens, our computers, our laptops to freeze, and we can't do anything with them until that ransom is paid, that ransom is paid. And so we want to bring this into terms that we understand. So as we talk about things that freeze us up, um, we found out that for James and John, that malware that froze them up with that particular uh, sin that they had was that overambition and that ungodly pride. But there are also other things that can freeze us all up, and a lot of it has to do with some things that cause us uh, to not be spiritual and, of course, cause us to not show our humanity. So, whatever it is, the spirit that's going on over Cleveland, you can tell that it is shutting down some people in their humanity because they don't care where they point a gun at and who may get hit or who may get harmed. The young man in the college in Oregon obviously has some type of malware to shut down his spirituality as well as his humanity because he didn't went and kill his other fellow human beings and classmates. So that's you know a little bit of how when I was trying to tell the children how the Lord is telling us to take care of as much as you can now in terms of the little things, the little bit of anger you think. But if you don't take care of it and, and, and disagreements and stuff like that and try to find a resolve, those things can turn to bigger problems like what we've seen here in Cleveland as well as in Oregon. And so today God wants us to be reminded that there are things that freeze us up, such as lust that can ruin relationships, Envy, being uh, jealous, um, and, 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 and also something that may not seem like it, but maybe you be too lazy to care one way or the other about what happens in your home as well as in our community. Perhaps there's some anger that's going on in your relationships, or maybe even what you may think is just a little bit of abuse, but uh, uh, as our word telling us, telling us that there's a huge possibility little anger problems, little abuse problems you think are little, if not taken care of, not, you don't go get help. If you don't deal with the situation, it can, of course, turn into something more than what you're able to control. Maybe you've got a controlling personality that's causing your life to freeze up um, and, and keep your life frozen, as well as keeping your life dysfunctional. Whatever it is, if, if, if the gospel is anything, it's about being free from the things that frees us up. It's about being set free. It's about being released to a new life. And like I said, so many people run from Jesus. They run from the church. But what they don't understand is, here is where you get your freedom. Here is where you get your life from. Because there are things that we know in our Bible that when you follow them, God will continue to bless you and bless your life. But so many of us want to do things our own way, the way we see things happen on television to say it's right to do that, it's right to do that. But our Bible says that's not the best choice of life for you. And of course, in the end, people do find that out, unfortunately. And so other things that can keep us frozen uh, uh, and keep us remaining uh, the best that we can be for Jesus um, is anger and, and, and once again, pride and, and grief. And, and even stubbornness. Some people are just so stubborn, they don't want you to tell them anything. And what they don't understand is they're trying to help you, that, that, you're, that you're trying to help them, that you're trying to look out for their best interest, but the stubbornness has gotten so bad, so demonic, to the point where they won't even listen. And then sometimes things that can freeze us up is when you follow your emotions and not necessarily God's word. God's word says that there's some things, that some things that are good for us and some things that are not good for us. But because of our emotions, we think we can outsmart God and we can think that it's okay to do X, Y, and Z when his word clearly tells us not to do that, please don't do that. And then, of course, in the end, you'll find out that 
it was best to be able to follow God's word. You can be frozen in fear for whatever reason. Uh, you can be frozen in, in, in dealing, dealing with your emotions, and so you go out and you do this shopping, spending spree. Or you get yourself involved in unhealthy relationships that are not of God and um, with people who are not good for you because you are frozen in your malware and your sin. So what is it there for us to do? Very briefly, experts tell us that one of the ways to prevent being infected by ransomware is to make sure that you have installed software on your computer um, and that it's always kept up to date. I think some of the names like McAfee, and I can't think of any other companies, but for those of you who have computers, it's good for you to get those anti-environment software and not just get it one time, but to get it and to renew it and to keep it up to date. But make sure you check with the expert on that because I don't want you to install something that you think is anti-virus software, but it really is malware. So make sure you go to a computer expert, you know, like Mr. Gerald over here. Anybody ever help you out? <laughs> All right. So that's good advice for our spiritual lives as well. And so what can we do to prevent our spiritual lives from freezing up? Well, one is to stay in God's word. I know I say this all the time, but it's so true. Stay in God's word. Just as often as you're eating, and you know a lot of us will get those three meals a day in, no matter what, plus something. Am I right? <coughs> oh, this is the one meal people down here? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, just as often as we're eating and feeding on the food that we stuff in our faces, God wants us to be in our word as well. Because in we are in his word. That's when we learn things. That's when we get our power. That's when we get energized. So stay in God's word. According to Psalms 119, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And then the second thing is prayer. When worry and anxiety ties us up in knots, we're instructed to pray. The Bible tells us, don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. It's a good thing to do. And you can go ahead and pay your psychologist and psychiatrist the money that they need so you can talk to them. But I encourage you also to take out time to talk to God and do it on a daily basis and on a regular basis. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, the other thing that we can do is community which means that we find strength in numbers. It's no accident that those who are in uh, pretty much like AA groups, because we have them here, uh, we have them down at uh, Simpson, as well as other churches that I've been in. And the reason why they go to meet weekly meetings, because it is one of the keys to sobriety. And so likewise, the Bible reminds us to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And so, once again, it's important for us to be in God's Word, it's important for us to be in prayer, and it's important for us to come to church and be supportive of one another, especially if we want to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So as I close, let me say this, only a techie, you want to know what a Somebody who's really into the technology, only a techie can unlock a computer screen. But Jesus, as a ransom for many, does something so much more meaningful. Jesus gives us back our lives. And only Jesus has the power to unlock our frozen and locked up lives. So if you're experiencing any of that today, it just seems like you can't move forward in life. Just seems like you're stuck. Just seems like things are just wrong. Just seems like there's something inside of you that's so cold, just so cold, that maybe you need to try out our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you already have him in your heart, then maybe you need to read his word more. Maybe you need to praise him more. Go some praise songs. Sing the songs of the Lord. Get involved with the church. Get involved with the community. Do some mission work. Because that, my friends, is what you may be lacking, especially when you feel frozen in your heart and in your life. There's a prayer I'm going to close with, and it reads like this. It's called Help My Frozen Heart. I don't know who the author is, but it does come from the internet. So just Google Help My Frozen Heart if you need to. 
And it says, at times, Lord, I seem so icy, my heart frozen within me, so sharp I could cut anyone in two, so cold to others that I could freeze them too. Hard, unmelting, unforgiving, unloving, often unable to warm anything. Lord, when I'm in these moods, please send your spirit to melt my frozen heart, to warm my chilled soul. Come, Holy Spirit, help me make a fresh start and kindle in me the fire of your love. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much for your word today and for reminding us that sometimes malware not only can affect our community, but it can affect us as well. Please help us to get rid of those things that freeze not only us up, but also freezes our church and our community, as well as whatever we come along. Jesus is the answer. And so, if you are here today and you've never accepted Christ into your life, as your personal Savior, we're letting you know today that Jesus is the answer. He has paid the ransom for what he did on the cross for us to live in freedom, to be happy. Not just happy, but to be joyful, especially in the midst of things not going as well as we would like them to do. If you want this relationship with Jesus Christ, then all you have to do is say this prayer. You don't have to say it out loud, but you can say it to yourself, something like this. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose again and that you're coming back again. So I'll confess now that I've given you my life, take my life, leave my life. And when it comes time for me to die, for I surely will die one day and you will be caught up in the rapture. Take me home to heaven to be with you. For it's in Jesus' name that I do pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. And of course, if you said that prayer, the angels in heaven are rejoicing, and I rejoice with you as well. For some discipleship, look through the bulletin. There's lots of them in there, both classes for you to come to, as well as things you can do with Right Now Media, as well as I Disciple. At your own time, on your, on your own convenience, in your home, in your car, where? On your phone, on your tablet, or your computer. Discipleship is no longer an excuse, because you can get it. Big time, anywhere, just read the bulletin. And of course, if you're interested in membership, we're always looking for that, so please feel free to see me afterwards. We're going to continue on in our service as we go to our time of prayer, which is a very crucial and important part of that. In the meantime, I do uh, was asked to ask um, that there is a person from our community. Um, our best who has a need to help to do some cleanup of their home. Um, you can see me afterwards if you're if you want to do some mission work of that caliber. And uh, also someone is needing some tools to help prepare some things in this home that they're doing uh, for free. So if this is a mission project that you would like to take on, please go for to see me afterwards. Amen. We did have some prayer cards turned in. Um, I'm going to a prayer for James and for Gary. Um, so let's pray about their efforts um, at the uh, Point of Craft Fair and their efforts at the Craft Fair. Um, of course, that they will be blessed as well as so let's keep those things in mind. Also, um, continue to pray for Guy. I see her son is here visiting, and uh, it's good to see him, and of course, everyone that um, I have missed, good to see all of you. But we want to keep Guy and her family definitely in our prayers. So with that, we're going to begin our time of prayer with a few seconds of silent prayer. <laughs> I'll come in with a pastoral prayer, and then we will conclude together with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, and Lord, we just want to give you all the glory and honor and the praise, and thank you for blessing us with another Sunday. 
allowing us all to be here, and of course, praying for those families who have lost their loved ones this past week who are not here on this day. And then, Lord, we also want to come and ask for forgiveness for all of our sins, that you will clean us up from those things that we may have said, God, or done, that were displeasing in your sight. And then, of course, we want to come with joy and thank you for all of the joys in our lives, for family, for babies, for celebrations. And, and if you didn't know it, the sound of a baby is one of the best things that church has. So we are so glad to hear our babies this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 And then, Lord, I want to thank you for the joy for birthdays and anniversaries and healings, but we know that we have some concerns that are brought before us, as well as in our hearts. And we pray that you will meet us at our most urgent point of our need. So, great and holy God, you are our refuge and strength, and ever friendly help in trouble, because you are always near. We have no reason to fear. Even when our world and our lives seem to be falling apart, crumbling beneath our feet, in the midst of danger and destruction, violence and vice, malice and malady, you are a rock of faithfulness, a refuge in which we may find shelter, a port of safety from the storm, a mother's comfort from our fears and anxieties. Hide us now under your wings, melt our frozen hearts, cover us with your mighty hand, and when the oceans rise and the thunder roars, we will soar with you above the floods, above the clouds, beyond the turmoil and chaos of this world. We will be still and know that you are God, and in you we will find rest for our weary hearts and hope for our souls. And as we close out our prayer, let's remember all of our firefighters, military personnel, and the police officers. And to God, of course, we pray that you will protect them as well as all of us, Lord. And of course, we want to thank you for your help and pray for more spiritually, numerically, financially. Oh God, and of course, continue to send us labors to carry out your mission and your vision in this place, oh God. And we ask all these things in the precious and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. God will. 